Hey everyone, it's Gregory Deli Carpini Jr. here at the museum at FIT checking out their latest offering, Denim Fashion's Frontier. This new exhibit has the ambitious task of exhibiting a 175 year history of the famed blue jean. Now I say ambitious because denim has been embedded into both popular and subculture for so many years. Just about everyone wears this look. From your mom and your best friend to bikers and prisoners to Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears sashaying down the red carpet in head to toe denim looks. They really have something for everyone. And many of those looks are right here under one roof, including a pair of jeans that predate the first pair of Levi's. So let's go check it out. I'm standing here with the exhibit's curator, Emma McClendon. Hi. How hi. are you? Good, good. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So where did you start in planning this kind of extremely well edited and an enormous task? Well, the way this exhibition actually started was I was working on an exhibition last year that focused on the work of Yves Saint Laurent and Halston in the 1970s. And you can't read about the 1970s without reading about denim. Yeah. Um, it was the period when denim really exploded across the board and was used in all all types of fashion. So that launched my interest and I started looking at the collection and was blown away by what we had. So that was really my starting point. And you really focus on the nuances too, and not just kind of specific moments in time, but their transition. Mm, absolutely. That was a big thing I wanted to highlight was I wanted to give visitors all the touchstones of a typical history of denim. You can see the workwear examples, you can mm. see the cowboy clothes, yeah. you can see the biker and the hippies, etc. Right. But I really wanted to also put those alongside women's wear, examples of high fashion pieces that maybe a typical viewer won't know about to show this more nuanced view of denim's history. So out of all these pieces, what are some of your favorites? One of my favorite pieces is actually one that we're standing right in front of. Um, it's called The Popover Dress mm -hmm. by Claire McArdle. It was introduced in 1942. She was actually, Claire McArdle, American sportswear designer, was actually asked to create this dress by Diana Vreeland and Carmel Snow of Harper's Bazaar. Wow. Um, she was asked to do it because because during World War II, um, unfortunately, due to the necessities of the home front, so many affluent housewives had lost their housekeepers and um, their cleaners to the war effort. They all went to go work in factories. And so what Claire McArdle came up with was a denim wrap dress, essentially, that was durable, easy to care for, um, also easy to clean, but that you wouldn't have to worry about getting it too messed up either. And it really has informed so much of what other fashion designers since since the 1940s have used denim for. Right to act right, my insight bright like street lights at midnight. Barely see me when you're faded, but I keep my flow skin tight. Say my name when you're debating your favorite, I've been nice. And I keep getting better with age, I must say. I cross the younger me any So now we're standing in front of a bunch of pieces that are from the 1950s, kind of when denim had this little kind of bad connotation around it. Absolutely. The 1950s is a really standout period in denim's history. Um, during this era, thanks to a number of different films, including mm. The Wild One starring Marlon Brando, mm. also famously Rebel Without a Cause, these films really culturally coded denim as associated with juvenile delinquents, biker gangs, mm. criminals. Mm. And so in 1955, a bunch of denim mills and denim companies kind of banded together to create the Denim Council, which mm. attempted to rebrand denim as sort of suburban and family friendly and all of these things. And I think this is a great time to have this exhibit because you know you have fashion that's kind of leading the way with denim and mm -hmm. taking it and appropriating it in such new ways. Yeah. So yeah. how do you feel about people saying that denim is over, denim cells are down? What do you think about that? I think denim's in a really interesting period because I think that there was such a saturation of the market. It exploded during that premium denim moment and it had such a heyday that now the tricky thing is trying to reconcile with where denim's going in the future. Mm -hmm. I think that there is that problem of athleisure that, you know, that leggings and jeggings kind of filling that space right. where jeans maybe previously held kind of um, their own. And so I think it's just about the denim market. I don't think denim's ever going to go away. I don't I don't think right. denim's ever going to be dead. It yeah. carries such rich cultural history and people have such a love for it and yeah. such an affinity for it yeah. and feel so passionately about it and resonate with it so much that I think they will always be incorporating it into their wardrobe. Very true. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 
So whether you're looking to brush up on your history of denim or just come here for some raw inspiration, be sure to come here to the museum at FIT from now through May 1st and check out Denim Fashions Frontier.